So dear randomised gaming viewer, it is sadly true to say the digital Grim Reaper is having a very busy year this year. As digital video games and download content are being struck off by him left, right and centre. While Mario and his minions at Nintendo have been busy finishing off the Nintendo 3DS and Wii U eShops, so no one can then buy any games on either of those digital stores. Then they had the cheek to issue a patch to the 3DS after the shutdown of the stores to try and stop homebrew content from even being run on it. And then Nintendo have to wonder why barely anyone actually bothered to download that patch after they'd shut down the store. Although Nintendo do have you at gunpoint if you do need to download any patches or recover any of your purchases from what now remains of the 3DS store, you will then have to download that patch, but the most recent patch has purely been an attempt to try and stop homebrew and hacking on the 3DS console. Sadly, Nintendo fans in general failed to kick up enough fuss about this, and as soon as one of the other main console manufacturers did the grim deed with their online shop, the others were always going to soon follow. And as Mario wipes off the blood and hardware components of the 3DS and Wii U from his baseball bat, we now know Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox at Microsoft, is also planning a crime. We know the place, and we know the time, but can anyone stop him from killing off the Xbox 360 Marketplace store? Before I say anything more, I want to pause for a moment and say if you agree with what we are covering and pointing out in this video, you need to share it with as many people as you can, so we can spread the word. You can also help more people see this video by watching it to the end, as the average watch time really impacts how much YouTube's algorithm will spread our video here at Randomized Gaming. So please do watch it for as long as possible. Leave a comment as well about what you think, and consider pressing the like button as interactions with this video also help us. What doesn't help any content creator on YouTube is if you start a video and then click off it after only a minute or two, that will reduce our average watch time and then YouTube won't recommend this video. And we do want to get this message out there to as many people as possible. They need to know about the shutdown, just like they need to know about all the other ones. Unfortunately, we're unlikely to be able to prevent this one, but at least we can get the word out there and say, you know, this does need looking at, because I think there is a serious case here about whether there needs to be legislative changes to make sure these type of things don't happen, or at least this content is archived correctly, which at present it isn't. Right, so the big news is that on July the 29th of 2024, the Xbox 360 Marketplace store will be closed permanently. Now, sadly, we had some foreshadowing of this event in the recent delisting announcement that occurred earlier in the year. As you know, we covered a video of a number of games that were being delisted, and I suspect those games were being delisted probably due to license or contractual agreements that were running out, and Microsoft had already told them the store was going to be closed in 2024. As not only that, but data miners who actually looked at the Xbox Marketplace store shortly after that announcement discovered that a message had been put in for the closure of the store. And although Microsoft denied they were not closing the store at the time, it's soon come apparent that they were going to now, only a few months later. My industry experience also suggests that they probably would have informed them, probably around the start of the year, end of last year. That would also explain why we suddenly got a mass closure of EA or Electronic Arts server closures and a few other closures and delistings were suddenly started to remove because Microsoft would notify first parties, second party and third party publishers and content creators first that they were going to remove the stuff and then they would notify the public. And it would explain some of the delistings as contract renewals run out and I do believe there is a fee for listing stuff on the Xbox 360 marketplace every year or two from Microsoft that developers have to pay and want to, they don't want to pay that fee because they've only got going to get six months on it or they feel that the game hasn't sold enough they will delist it. I might be slightly wrong on that but I'm pretty sure there is some sort of fee. I've certainly remember being told at the time back when I worked on 360 games and I've a few I'm accredited on 
there was some sort of fee or something Microsoft did charge for them to be kept up on the Xbox 360 marketplace. And just a warning now, delistings are slowly occurring each and every month. So even though they've said the store closure isn't till 2024, delistings are occurring. As I said, people don't want to renew licenses if they don't feel they're going to get the full money's worth. An example of this is the recent Xbox 360 delisting of the digital version of the game Enchanted Arms, which according to the website Delisted Games was removed on July 14th, 2023 by UBISoft who also delisted the 360 version of Cell Factor Psychonetics Wars with no warning. So as with the Nintendo store closure, don't wait until the last minute to pick up a game or DLC you're after as you may find they've already been delisted by that point. And as we discovered with the Nintendo store, there were quite a few issues where you could only put on so much money in your account each month. It would actually block your card if you put too much on your account as well there were all sorts of things that were unexpected so you don't just expect to be able to buy everything on the last day and don't leave it to the last minute actually bought cell factor psychonetic wars as soon as i saw about that delisting message on the playstation 3 and it's actually quite a nice uh, unreal tournament clone it's actually much better than i was expecting and i'm kind of disappointed i did get out of 360 now as that still apparently has the ability to actually get the online achievements as it uses the xbla service the PlayStation 3 one used GameSpy servers, although it does allow you to host local matches as well, but it needed the GameSpy servers for player matches and ranked matches. And if people are interested, I might take a look at that game in another video. So here's actually the official press statement from Microsoft, which all users of the Xbox 360 marketplace were sent recently in an email. Service update Xbox 360 store changes. Starting July 29th of 2024, the Microsoft Store on Xbox 360 and on marketplace.xbox.com will no longer be supporting purchases. This includes games, trials, add-on, avatar items, apps, gamer picks, game trailers and videos. It also includes purchases like gamer tag changes on Xbox 360 Xbox Live Gold subscriptions, in-game purchases, and movie and TV. Games and content purchased before that date will still play as intended, and content re-downloads will continue to be supported for owned content. If you intend to redeem any codes for Xbox 360 content via your Xbox 360 console, then you will need to redeem them to your account before July 29th, 2024. After that date, they may no longer be redeemable, gift cards and subscription cards will not be impacted. And finally it also goes on to say that you can find the full list of backwards compatible titles and DLC supported on Xbox Series X slash S and Xbox One consoles at the Xbox Backwards Compatibility Games Library below. These titles can still be purchased at xbox.com after July 29th, 2024 and are playable on Xbox 360 consoles too. So that's the official announcement. Now, one caveat I'd put in first off is that I had issues trying to redeem balance codes on the Xbox 360 last time I tried and I had to redeem them on the Xbox One, so that was an issue. You may need to only be able to redeem them on the Xbox website or the Xbox One or an Xbox Series X slash S. The other thing is, if you buy a backwards compatible game after the shutdown, I do not know if you will then get the Xbox 360 version once the shutdown has occurred, because if they're shutting down all the store, and I assume when you purchase it on the Xbox One, it then has to go back and add it to your 360 account. If that's been shut down, is that going to still work? So that's another caveat that's not that clear. From what this message currently says, it seems so but I would take it with a little bit of a grain of salt until after the closure and we find out exactly what's going to happen. A selection of back catalogue games will still be available to buy on the Xbox One and Xbox Series X as that post says, but many back catalogue titles that are actually supported on the Xbox One and Series X are already delisted from the service and can no longer be purchased as of the time of recording of this video, which is the 29th of August 2023. So unless you already own them, you can't play them on the newer Xbox 
one console or Xbox Series X as they are no longer available to purchase. Prime example of this is Daytona USA which as we saw in our previous video was delisted earlier in the year. And something that also really needs serious mention is not every game that is backwardsly compatible works 100% correctly on the newer systems. For example the Double Impact Collection by Capcom, when we captured it on the Xbox One I noticed it doesn't display the arcade cabinet correctly and you can actually see through the section of it just below the game screen like where the bezel is supposed to be. In the 360 it was black but in the Xbox One it's actually see through and you could see through to the other side of the sort of display area that's used to make up where the cabinets are shown. Now my example is a fairly minor graphics issue but it's still slightly annoying to see that the arcade cabinet doesn't display correctly in the Capcom Double Impact collection. But that's only one minor bug and admittedly Final Fight and Magic Sword are now on the more recent Capcom Arcade Stadia collections but there's still some cool features like the remix music which was only included in the Double Impact collection. However I've actually seen a number of reports now saying that the games on Xbox Series X and S actually has much weaker backwards compatibility and there are a lot more emulation issues with the games running on the latest Xbox consoles. So while they had backwards compatibility support which is very good on the Xbox One as effectively I think it's piggying back the Xbox Series Series X and S is actually using the Xbox One back catalogue so if that's kind of trying to emulate the Xbox One and in terms of emulating an Xbox 360 you're getting a piggyback effect there and as things go further down the line you start getting quite a few nasty bugs and that's kind I think a few of the bugs I've heard are a bit reminiscent of how the Xbox 360 used to do some Xbox games as some Xbox games were supposedly backwards compatible as example Marvel vs Capcom 2 supposedly was backwards compatible on the Xbox 360 if you had the Xbox version but if you played it it was very much a broken mess and really was borderline unplayable. You could still play it but it wasn't much fun to play as it was graphics glitching all over the place. But that's something to keep in mind that the more console generations we go down unless they really improve the backcat support and they've basically killed it off now it appears then you're going to have a lot of 360 games that start getting worse and worse. There may even be a few with crashes and bugs that render them unplayable. So in some cases you really do want to play an Xbox 360 game on the original Xbox 360 hardware. So I will just remind people again if you buy games after the shutdown it's unclear if they will actually then work on the Xbox 360 store because effectively it's been shut down. Maybe it will be added to your download list on the Xbox 360 at that point but it, I'd be a bit haphazardous because we have seen quite a few issues with the Xbox 360 sort of download service now and I will go into that in a separate video. Now another factor I do need to mention is that just because you can buy the game in the Xbox One store doesn't mean you can buy all the connected DLC. There are quite a few games where you can buy the game in the Xbox One store but you cannot then buy the DLC. The DLC is only listed on the Xbox 360 marketplace and this is actually quite a big problem or there are also issues actually getting uh, transactions through. So a couple of examples. One N Plus which was backwardsly compatible however I noticed you could not buy any of the three DLCs on the Xbox One store. One of the DLCs was three, the other two were paid for I seem to recall and uh, they add in a great huge number of levels on N+. It's actually a really good game and you can see some of it running in the background now but you cannot buy the DLC on the Xbox One store so unless that's been updated when that got delisted the DLC is now per per permanently delisted so unless they've recently added those into the store you can't buy them. And another example on the Xbox 360 and it's actually one that's really broken is Bethesda's own The Elder Scrolls for Oblivion has an issue where you can't buy the DLC for the Wizard's Tower it just errors on the Xbox One. So if you try and buy the Wizard Tower DLC it gives you a error message on the Xbox One. I just could not buy it. I found quite a few threads saying you can't buy the Wizard's Tower on the Xbox One and I was forced to actually pick it up via the Xbox 360 Marketplace store in order to be able to buy it 
and then download it on the Xbox One. So I did actually get it on the Xbox One, but I had to buy it on the Xbox 360 Marketplace store, not the Xbox One store. As soon as they shut down the Xbox 360 Marketplace store, unless they fix that issue, you cannot buy the Wizards Tower on the Xbox One store. In that case, it's actually listed on the Xbox One store, but if you try and buy the Wizards Tower DLC for Oblivion, it will error. You would think with Bethesda and Microsoft being first parties now that they would want to make sure all their core games are working but then we are talking about a company that put out a game called Gears of War Tactics that I managed to crash on my first two attempts in the tutorial and there are numerous reports of it being very broken on the Xbox Series X as well. We had all sorts of fun on the Xbox One X so whether they need to patch that game but yeah it, it's just really clunky and very bad and that's a really poor show and that's a worrying sign if Microsoft's own first party games are broken on the Xbox One what does that mean when they shut down the store? As it does raise questions about the quality control at Microsoft and their competency if they don't want to fix issues surrounding their own games. Some of which involve you actually being able to purchase them in their own stores and in a few cases download them as well. There are issues with actually downloading some games on the Xbox 360 now and I'll cut to that in another video but basically we have a digital version of the Blob 2 that will not download on the Xbox 360. It gets to 99% and then will fail the final authorization check and then go back to 0% and try and re-download it and it's just an endless loop. Now, while a large chunk of games and DLCs have been delisted from the store over the years already, this includes the shutdown of the digital indie service, which I already covered in some videos a few years back. Links in the cards above. Even free DLC has been removed, such as the expansions for the Army of Two, the 40th day. Maybe EA should do the right thing and stick it back up in the 360 store until it closes. After all, it's three DLC. Why are you delisting it? And when it comes to the worst delisting of all, or one of the worst I'm aware of, unless there was a game that was pulled after a day or something, spare a thought for the Xbox 360 version of Kung Fu Strike, The Warriors Rise which got delisted along with its DLC just after it was on sale for around two months. The DLC was only up for just over a month before it was delisted. If it wasn't for the fact that game got a PC release, it would be one of the rarest games of all time and certainly the rarest game on Xbox 360 that got an official release. As it stands, it's likely the rarest digital game on Xbox 360 that got an official release and as there's no retail version, you have to be pretty lucky to actually own this game now. Which was quite a shame as it was actually a very good arcade style scrolling beat em up and I really enjoyed it, but do check out the PC version, we do actually have a video of it on the channel as well. There are still a lot of great games on the service and many still remain exclusive to the Xbox Live arcade service to buy. I have to be honest, XBLA or Xbox Live Arcade was quite a catchy name for the service and one Microsoft should have stuck with as it makes sense to divide the smaller digital only games from digital versions of mainstream retail games along with indie releases and quite frankly they could do with a section called Kusogi for all those terrible asset flip and easy achievement games these days which really are a bit of an affront to games design and some of those games even give shovelware a bad name quite frankly. Plus all the digital stores these days could do with better search functions to find games and their relevant DLC. Certainly listing retro games by their original release decades would help as well when it comes to looking for older games these days. So my personal advice to you, if you are looking to buy Xbox 360 games, go through the Xbox 360 store today, look at all the games available in it, look at the games you want to own, so think about picking them up over the course of the year, also look at the games you own and don't have the DLC for. I would certainly recommend making a list and if you're an achievement hunter, do go over all the games you have because if you want to get all those achievements, you're going to need to make sure you've got all the very relevant DLCs of achievements as well. So certainly if you're looking to buy stuff, make a list and plot out 
what you can actually afford to buy, what you want to buy, and then try and mix the two so you have the best list. Basically go for the best games you want to own or the best DLCs you don't have, etc. Suffice to say, unless you're a millionaire, you ain't going to be buying every single game on the service before this shutdown. But just as a quick reminder, do remember what I said earlier in the video about games currently being delisted as we go along already. As I mentioned, we've seen some games pulled since the recent closure announcement, so they won't be available when the store actually closes. As I said the digital version of Enchanted Arms got pulled the other week. So certainly if you are looking to buy stuff, get it now. Don't wait till the end or just before the shutdown because I suspect by then a number of games will be pulled. Certainly I wouldn't be surprised if quite a lot get pulled around Christmas this year and stuff because they may be like yearly renewals and things so I would try and get as much that you want now rather than wait till next year. Now games being delisted aren't the only problem you're going to be facing now as a 360 gamer. Online gaming services are being shut down as well at the minute and EA have announced pretty much a raft of service closes. It's pretty much every single 360 game they currently own is getting the online shutdown. Not quite everything, but I suspect in due course, the remaining few stragglers will get announced for shutdowns as well. And some 360 games, once the online servers get closed, will be turned into little more than coffee coasters to put your cup of tea or cup of coffee on it. As the best thing you'll get when you insert the disc is maybe a title screen and some nice background music to listen to as as soon as you press start it's going to throw a server wobbly error message. While digital games will be simply a nice icon to look at on your dashboard and little else. The announcement of the Xbox 360 store closure helped explain why EA have been shutting down so many of their servers in this past year with one of the few surviving ones being Mass Effect 3, which currently doesn't have a shutdown date, but expect its days to be numbered once EA and Bioware can no longer make money from those cursed N7 packs. And just to add to our woes, Mass Effect 3 is a great example of a single player game that will actually be affected when the servers are actually closed for it as it will become impossible to obtain the best ending in Mass Effect 3 if you only own the base game once the online servers are closed. As the effective military strength requirements to unlock the best ending needed the multiplayer galaxy ready stateness to be around 100%, which requires you to complete a number of multiplayer missions to do so. The free DLC The Extended Cut patched the game to lower the effective military strength score and the other DLCs add additional ways to get additional score making this target much easier to hit. But this is one game where the single player content will be affected if you don't own the DLC when those servers close. Well Electronic Arts and Bioware need a reason for you to pick up Mass Effect Legendary Edition after all and it's fair to say from websites like Amazon you can pick up the Legendary Edition for less than 20 quid which for free games is absolutely fantastic value. Now in the background of this video you can see lots of footage of the 2012 video game Syndicate running along. It was a very average playing first person shooter that was a very unwelcome update to the classic Bullfrog strategy game. It annoyed fans of the original and was never going to appeal to the Call of Duty crowd. It was a total misstep and ended up flopping as a result. Had it been a new strategy outing in the series, fans would have been all over the moon and as the remake of XCOM showed, there is a market for these type of games and I have to admit I would have absolutely loved to have seen an update to the original Amiga and PC classic game Syndicate and its follow-up Syndicate Wars. This is hard to call a sequel, this the 2012 Syndicate game, but it got made at least. Now some of you are asking why am I showing it in the background? Well, back in June the multiplayer element was shut down. This was actually half the game, as it introduced a number of extra missions that took place after the single campaign, and these could be played solo, and I hasten to add that solo, or in multiplayer. Despite the fact you could play them solo, they can now no longer be accessed as you had to connect to EA servers to save your online character profile for this part of the game. 
quite why it's clearly just a ploy by EA. There was no reason for this stuff to be online. It could have just been peer to peer, but EA made you connect to their servers. And there's there are some issues with this that I think they really need to start investigating. I have a plan to do a video showing all these missions from Syndicate and the Day One Gold DLC at some point in the future, but it shows you that some of the content that previously you could access in game is now completely inaccessible. Unless someone can figure out a way to access this content at present, all these multiplayer missions, and there was about 10 in total, are now inaccessible. Sadly, Electronic Arts aren't the only one doing this either. Two From Software games that were saw a large part of the game shut down completely. One was Chrome Hounds and the other was Armored Core 5. The Sega published Chrome Hounds was a huge online mech war game and was released in 2006 and it was blooming good stuff with large teams of players battling out in a free fractioned war. Sega pulled the plug on it way back in 2010 reducing the game to a handful of single player missions that act purely as a tutorial for each of the mech units in preparation for you to go to the online mode. Oh well. Meaning it's been 13 years since you could actually play the online mode and the online mode has now been dead for three times more years than it was actually playable in. As, an, as this game was primarily made as an online mech battle shooter it means you just simply cannot access 95% of the game. Armour Core 5 released in 2012 and had the online swiftly killed in 2014. So yeah, people saying about From Software, this is one of their more brutal moments. A mere two years after release. This happened a few months after the expansion follow-up Armoured Core Verdict Day was released. While the game has a decent single player, it borrowed online elements from Chrome Hound with another three-faction war and special bosses players could take on. Basically you'd fight other players in mini mech battles and once you'd fought enough you could rank up points to fight these special bosses. There were a load of achievements linked to beating these special bosses as well. Although in the European servers it was broken so that you just had to pick the bosses to fight. You would had none of the mech warring elements as the game wasn't set up correctly in Europe. I got the impression at the time the shutdown may have been either to move players onto Armour Core Verdict Day, which has the same sort of free faction war gameplay, or to repurpose them for Dark Souls 2 at the time. And this was a real shame to me as I have to admit I was deeply disappointed with Dark Souls 2 and found Armour Core 5 a much better game. Now that Armour Core 6 Fires of Rubicon has arrived, expect Armoured Core Verdict Day to have its servers shut down pretty swiftly. And it's a real shame as Armour Core 6 doesn't really have much of a multiplayer, it just has peer-to-peer -peer verse matches. Armour Core Verdict Day carried on the basically Armour Core 5 multiplayer where you basically had to tactically join clans battle it out against other teams and fight bosses over Fraction Wars and that's still operational at present and that does have the full implementation of the Fraction War system in the European one and it's actually really good. It used to be part of an S-ranked clan where you used to basically go out, you'd hunt players, you'd then go after the various bosses to try and take the territories. It's very good and it's disappointing to see they haven't brought that into Armour Core 6 because you could like hire out mercenaries and things as well because other players could do could act as mercenaries and get cash in for their clans as well. So there's some really cool elements. I really wish that had been in Armour Core 6, but it's not. But if you are planning to play Armour Core Verdict Day, I do recommend grabbing the UNAC DLC as that came in quite handy for the main game as that gave you some pre-built UNACs. And the remixed or additional sound music as well, which is quite handy for the multiplayer as it allows you to have the two soundtracks then. So there are a couple of DLCs worth considering if you plan on playing it before the inevitable shutdown for Verdict Day, which is going to come now that they've closed the 360 servers. So if you like Armored Core 6, check out Armored Core Verdict Day now before they close the online servers. One example of what will become a digital coffee coaster will be Battlefield 1943, the enjoyable Pacific themed World War II Battlefield game which closes for good on December the 8th, 2023 for both Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Now Battlefield 1943 has already been delisted from the store, but if you've got EA Play or if you previously bought it, 
you can play it on Xbox One and Xbox 360 still. So if you fancy getting the achievements or just playing it for fun, do so now before December the 8th, 2023. There are still an awful lot of players on it as well. So it seems quite bizarre EA are actually removing it. Both Battlefield Bad Company 1 and 2 will also see their online multiplayer shutting down on the same day as Battlefield 1943, which means that in the case of Bad Company 2, the Vietnam multiplayer DLC for the game will become completely inaccessible, as it didn't include any single player content. In a lot of these cases with this type of server shutdown, someone needs to start asking some hard and serious questions like why these multiplayer games didn't include offline bots and split screen co-op so players could still play them offline. As there is clear evidence of planned obsolescence here, a practice that needs to be made illegal across the world. Do make sure to grab all the free DLCs and compatibility packs available for all the games you own or games that you look like you may want to buy. Even if you just start the download then cancel it, do so because you need to do that in order to add it to your download list. As some of these packs, certainly in Armour Core Verdict's days, example, that has a compatibility pack and you need that to play online once one of the patches came out, so make sure you get those compatibility packs to play online because you could have incompatibility issues if, let's say, you only have the base game later on and one of your friends you want to boost with to get some achievements online when the servers are still up has a compatibility pack you don't. That could cause all sorts of issues. You may not even be able to connect online in the case of some games as well without those packs. So go through the games that you intend to buy and make sure you download all the free DLC and any compatibility packs for online play, etc. As discussed earlier in the video, with Mass Effect 3, some three DLCs are actually stealth patches for the game. Keep that in mind also when downloading three patches. The extended cut DLC for Mass Effect 3 is a must these days, which also explains its file size. Despite Bioware claims otherwise at the time about it only containing movie files, it did actually address a number of bugs and fixes the game needed, so do download that. The excellent open world crime drama game Sleeping Dogs also did this on Xbox 360 with a 3 DLC called The Ghost Pig Pack which adds in a handful of free items but largely acts as a massive patch to fix most of the bugs in the game. Most notably the obvious giveaway with that was its size, the items were only a handful and it was over a gig in size yet. It was like, well, why is this patch a gig when it's only got a few items? It's basically a huge stealth patch. If you plan on getting the original version at this point, then it's certainly well worth getting this patch to get the most out of it to address most of the bugs. And do watch out, this was given away with Xbox Live Games with Gold. So if it's sitting on your gold list, think about grabbing this three patch. It is three to download, and again, it's called the Ghost Pig Pack. Of course, there is the Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition, on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 as well, and it, it it is an excellent game, so I do highly recommend it, but if you've got the 360 version, and probably it should, I imagine might have a patch on PS3 as well, but do check it out. Armored Core Verdict Day, Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012, and Gotham City Imposters are some of the many games with compatibility slash multiplayer updates DLC for the online mode. Make sure you download these packs before the store closes. As most of these games won't let you play online or use certain DLCs, and that's another one, you may need patches for some of the DLCs, as there can be a whole raft of issues as previously explained, but yeah, matching issues, gameplay, even actually accessing parts of the games without them. Now while I expect the online mode for a large chunk of Xbox 360 games to be killed off next year, with most of the remaining ones likely being killed off other than the Xbox server ones. This is again something to think about doing before all the servers close and the DLCs get removed. In the case of Gotham City's Imposters, you have to download these compatibility packs from in-game in order to start playing it. So in order to get on the servers you have to go in, download these packs and I have to admit it was very shaky at best when I did it a few years back but at present it all still seems to work. 
and the Xbox 360 version of Gotham City's Imposters is the last version still standing, all the others have been closed down. The digital dark age grows ever stronger with all these delistings. We've now seen the closure of stores and services for the original Xbox, Wii, Wii U, DSi, 3DS and soon to follow the Xbox 360. That's not even mentioning Google, Stadia or the PC games that have been hacked since the 2000s and every single console game that's been delisted on current formats as well and yes they do get delisted on the current format. With one of the most recent Nintendo Switch delistings being Castle of Shigairim 2 or Shigairi no Shiro which came out in April of this year and was recently delisted with no explanation for this. The blame for this being pointed squarely at the recently announced physical version released by Red Arts Games which isn't a great look for the studio. I can only assume the developers Alpha System and Japanese publisher Komos Mashehai have done this as part of a license deal. There is talk of new language translations being added when it gets released again in 2024. Still, it's not a good look to think a game that was released this year has already been pulled from sale from the digital storefronts. And I'm also still waiting for the third game in that series to get a European release to date. We're still waiting, Alpha Systems. It's not just gaming platforms that have been delisting content either. Streaming services like Disney Plus have been at it as well, binning content as part of a tax write-off it appears. Granted this includes some real gems, such as the terrible Willow TV series which was an affront to the original Ron Howard and George Lucas 1988 fantasy film. I did have to wonder if Warwick Davis was dropping subtle hints about its quality when he mentioned he was taking inspiration from Mark Hamill's Star Wars The Last Jedi performance which Hamill himself said he had to think of Luke as another character called Jank Skywalker as apparently he did disagree with the writing of the character in The Last Jedi film. Now while the TV series of Willow may not be very good and I personally would love to see every piece of Disney's Star Wars content sucked into a black hole never to be seen of or heard of again axing shows completely and not allowing anyone to view them isn't fair on the audience or any of the people who've worked on them. Even if that work isn't very good, it should still have a right to be watched and I still have a right to watch bad content and make up my own personal opinion on it. And this is the thing, lots of people do enjoy different shows just because I may not like something, other people will, and everyone has the right to make up their own opinion on it. We shouldn't have content binned away so no one can access it. It also means none of the staff who worked on that content can even earn royalties and even bad games, films and TV series will always have their fans and maybe that's the point. As long as someone somewhere in the world enjoys it, you've done something right. As I know firsthand myself, what it's like to see your work destroyed without any trace of it left and it's pretty heartbreaking I can tell you. I spent three years making content on PlayStation Home of which there is next to nothing of it left now and most of the service is now completely lost to time. As aside from a few YouTube videos, even if they do get it back up and running because of how home worked, I can only imagine they can get basically the apartment space and a few bits and bobs. Most of the spaces were externally connected and unless people have got archives of them, which I doubt very much as I know we were constantly updating the core spaces, they're going to be lost to time. PlayStation Home is gone it's been destroyed basically and that's a really sad fact and it's really annoying because I spent a lot of time putting in some working on some really good content on PlayStation and all my work colleagues as well all their work is basically lost we have nothing to show for it other than a handful of YouTube videos and you just put it on the CV hey we worked on PlayStation Home there's just nothing left of it now Yes, sadly we end this video on a bit of a downbeat note and I'm sorry to say that's the way things go unfortunately but that's what's coming we've already lost PlayStation Home and on July 29th of 2024 is when the Xbox 360 joins the digital dark age and we've already seen Nintendo ruthlessly shut down the 3DS and Wii U shops ignoring fans and once Nintendo went they've really given the credence for Microsoft and Sony to do the same and as mentioned 
with the 360 store going, with the Wii shut down, with the Wii U shut down and the 3DS store shut down. That means all the consoles from that era are now closing, all their online stores are dead. And of course it now turns to the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita, what's left of those stores. And I suspect this time it is only a matter of time before Shihi Yoshida and Jim Ryan at Sony finally decide it's time to pull the life support on what's left of the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita stores and the few PSP games you can still buy as well. They dodged the bullet once, they won't be so lucky a second time. And as we've already covered, the PlayStation 3 store really is falling apart at present. With a number of titles being de steadily delisted on the PS3 store and also the search function is rather broken and there are literally games and titles and software components in the PS3 store that you can't actually access via the PS3 store. So yeah, it's just madness. There's actually literally lost content. Same with the PS4 store. We discovered uh, Gotcha Racer 2nd is actually lost content. You can only buy it through the website. You can't access it in the PlayStation 4 store because they've broken the links to it. So it's blooming awful, the PS4 and PS3 store. But sadly, it's only a matter of time before Jim Ryan starts plotting the end of the PlayStation 3 store as well now. Now, one thing that's worth pointing out is Microsoft have been very anti-consumer this past few years. They have been doing a lot of things. So this is very anti-consumer and this is just another one of their legacy. They do seem to be upping their prices and everything. They seem to be cutting their costs as well. I do think the Xbox Series X and S has not performed particularly that well. I know they're obviously struggling in some elements, although Game Pass supposedly makes them lots of money. I mean, we are seeing there are a lot of consumer issues. They've axed games with gold. They've cut back the Xbox One reward scheme. We're getting price increases. So yeah, and now they're axing the 360 Marketplace store. So they're really not a very consumer friendly company. And I think maybe you should, people should be hashtagging that, you know, not consumer friendly. I think Phil Spencer does need to be told, you know, you're not doing very some lot of nice things here, Phil. This is just really crap. This is really just rubbish. It's Microsoft being pants. Microsoft buying Activision is a bit pants anyway because Microsoft need to actually spend and investing in making their own games rather than trying to buy up studios and not produce games with them and that's one of the main issues with the Activision takeover they need games because Microsoft aren't producing stuff they're not producing the kids games they're not producing most genres they're only mainly producing FPS's and a few other bits diversify your portfolio Phil start making other games you know Rare used to make some of the best kids games why aren't you making them and things like that it just shows you how inept microsoft are at this point and obviously they think they're going to save a bit of money there's been some talk of the back end needing updating to the 360 which i can believe to some extent i wouldn't be surprised if they run on windows 7 at best at present it's just not a very good look with all these stores being shut down all these games being delisted as they are going to be lost to time some of these are not going to come back some of these games the publishers are long gone the licenses are now lost in limbo, so do grab them while you still can. I'll be covering this more here at Randomised Gaming over the year with the best games to get before they go as well, and I will be taking another video in the near future looking at the store and looking at its state and some of the issues you're going to face. The moral of the story is, however, that if there is anything you're after on the Xbox 360 store, get it now before it's all gone. Don't delay buy it today as otherwise all that's going to be left once this store shuts down is this absolutely nothing